There's a lot of interest right now in uh, the engine failure after takeoff and uh, what do you do, how do you, how do you plan for it, how do you teach it, how do you practice it, all that stuff. I got a nickel on the grass I want to throw, so stick with me on Flywheel. I'm Scott Perdue and today on Flywire we're going to do another engine failure on takeoff, uh, after takeoff video. Uh, a couple of months ago I did uh, the B36 TC that had an engine failure at 300 feet out of uh, Pem uh, uh, Perry Airport, uh, North Perry in uh, Miami, Pembroke Prines. Um, it didn't end well and that sparked some other interest and uh, Richard McSpadden with the OPA's uh, Air Safety Institute they did their own version of this with a 172, a Super Cub, an RV uh, for maybe an 8, and an A36. And uh, uh, so they did that, and they also did a, a pretty interesting uh, forum at uh, Oshkosh about this topic and what the results of their test were. But frankly, I think they actually missed the point of what it's all about. Uh, what the problem, what the chief problem is, is it's, in, it's airplane specific, okay? And what that means is, is that, well, it's all about wing loading, okay? The wing loading of a Bonanza, this kind of Bonanza, an F-33C or an A, uh, is a lot less than an A-36. An A-36 is kind of a heavy airplane. Uh, a Super Cub is not, you know? So the wing loading is the big difference. And that's why, um, uh, I think the net, the net result essentially of uh, all of that was that uh, they didn't really suggest doing it unless you practice it, okay? And I, I believe that. Um, better to have a plan. Some safety gates, if you, if you will, that's what I like to call it. Airspeed and altitude of when you can afford to make the decision to turn back, how it's going to look like. But the bottom line is, is how do you teach this and how do you practice it going forward? Uh, frankly, uh, I think you have to decouple it, okay? Well, that, by that I mean that you do the turn back as an exercise all by itself and you do the landing portion as an exercise all by itself. In other words, you start the landing portion, the simulated engine failure, from altitude and then you glide down and uh, you execute a landing. And, but you have safety gates to work through that if it doesn't work out, you go around, period. Okay, so it's a, safety is the overall initiative here. Seeing it and getting that picture is the objective, but uh, that's, we don't sacrifice safety just to be able to see it, okay? The turn back maneuver itself is dangerous. I'll, I'll be I'll flat out and tell you, if you don't practice it, it isn't gonna turn out well, I, I very much doubt. If you're in a low, low wing loading airplane, like a Super Cub or a Carbon Cub, something like that, your chances are a whole lot better. But if you're in an air, a general aviation airplane, regular one like this, four-seater, six-seater, something like that, then it becomes more problematic. And combining the turn back, which is dangerous, you're right at the, right at the edge of a stall, really low to the ground, uh, what could go wrong, right? Well, <laughs> a lot. And uh, the landing portion, okay, are you conveniently aligned and all that? I just think it's, it's, I subscribe to the idea that when you do stuff in the air, you don't give yourself an emergency that you can't recover from. So I think that's the issue here. We decouple the turn back exercise from the landing exercise. And uh, that's what I'm going to go to today. So let's go fly and we're going to do the turn back exercise. And, my, and I'm not going to land. That's not the intention. It's just like the previous uh, impossible turn video I did. I'm not going to land. Uh, I'm going to use 300 feet as my go around altitude. So we're going to start at uh, VY at 100, 800 and 1,000 a, a feet. See how it works in this airplane. And then we'll start at a cruise climb. We'll do one, a, do two a cruise climb, VY, or sorry, cruise climb instead of VY at uh, 800 and 1,000 feet. And we'll see how it works out. Okay. And that's the whole point is I want to see what altitudes work, what my speed gates are, my altitude gates are. So I have something to go forward and practice, okay? That's the important thing. So let's go fly. What we're going to do here is uh, we're going to do uh, VX and VY. Y is 85. Uh, actually, we're not going to do VX, sorry. I'm not, I'm not doing VX. I've already done that. You end up in the stall. 
so I'm not going to ask what that. X is uh, 7285. Excuse me, Mineral Traffic, Sierra State 16, Charlie's left down one. one is VY 107 is cruise climb. Uh, so that's what we're, our targets are. I'm going to do two at VY, that's 800, and then 800 and 1,000 feet are my gates. So that's my speed, my uh, altitude gates. And then we're going to do two at cruise climb at uh, 800 and 1,000. See how that works out. Serious mineral oils. Could you say position again, please? Uh, we're, we're in the midfield left down one here. You have plenty of time. Go ahead. Thank you. We're doing an engine failure after takeoff of practice, so expect me to turn back. I won't be going to the runway, but I will be turning back to the left. Okay, we'll be looking for you. We are right now midfield left downwind before touch and go one three minute off. Mineral oils traffic, red and white bananas is taking the active one three mineral oils. Get warm today. 600 feet.
again at a thousand feet. Light 110 is unrealistic. Red white bonanza and the simulated single engine failure. Left turn. And mineral traffic, 60 Charlie's left base, 13 12. Traffic six zero eight one six 
Go Charlie, left base. One There's three. a go around point. Yeah, I didn't like that. That would not have worked. So that's my take on how to practice for a problem that really kills too many people. Engine failure after takeoff. You know, it's a dangerous maneuver to practice, and in my opinion, to do it safely, we just have to decouple the turn back exercise from the landing exercise. You know, is this a perfect solution? Well, no, I, I'll admit it's not. But I think it's about the safest way to train and practice this maneuver, at least in my opinion. That's my nickel on the grass. So let me cover the ground rules for this exercise again. There's no landing, unless of course it's a real emergency. You don't intend to land. You abort the exercise at about 350 feet. Don't go below 300 feet AGL. Your max bank angle is 45 degrees of bank. You don't have to be there. Pick your altitude and speed gates to test out for your airplane. And remember the wing loading, remember the wing loading is key for every different airplane. Don't make it up as you go along. Decide ahead of time and practice that so you have gates to use. Don't pull the prop, that extra drag is fine for the training exercise, then you're probably gonna forget it in the real world. And if the engine let go, it might not work anyway. The objectives of the turn back exercise are to see and practice the turn back maneuver as a standalone exercise to familiarize yourself with the handling issues and the picture that you see out the window, the geometry, it's fast. Do this safely, don't give yourself an emergency trying to fit a landing into the exercise, you know, it might kill you. And with this experience, you can judge whether your speed and altitude gates work or whether you need an alternate plan for an engine failure after takeoff. Well, let's review the test profile that I just flew real quick. The first two events were flown at VY for this airplane, which is 85 knots, and the second two were at cruise climb, 107, 110. The first altitude gate was 800 feet, the second was 1,000 AGL. The altitude choices were arbitrary, I admit, but you gotta start somewhere and lower is not better. Speed dropped off about 10 knots average during the three second wait time, and this is pretty close to the same for the cruise climb test runs. My speed target was 81 knots, which is a few knots above min sink for the airplane, but it gives you the energy to flare in the landing. Best glide speed would see a descent at rate of approximately 500 feet per minute greater than what we see at 81 knots, and that means you come down about 30% faster. Side note, the issue here is that best glide is a good choice if you need to go the distance. 
something closer to mid-sink is better because better if you want to spend more time airborne. If you've got the field made, you want to spend more time. And I've got a video coming up that's going to go into this a bit more depth than uh, I did the last time I looked at mid-sink. So at VY, I didn't feel like I had the energy in the airplane to get to 45 degrees of bank without getting too close to the stall for me. So during the first two turn backs, starting at VY, I stayed pretty close to 30 degrees of bank. And I got a pretty good feel for the energy in the airplane, and, that's, and that was driving how I maneuvered. It was only afterwards, when I reviewed the tapes, that I noticed the bank angles. Descent rates averaged about 1,000 feet per minute at 81 knots. The V cruise climb test had enough energy that I could, and did make it to 45 degrees of bank, and it took longer to attain the cruise climb speed, which put the airplane farther out at the beginning of the turn back exercise. My takeaways uh, for this exercise, for my airplane, is that the energy picture between the VY climb and the cruise climb was pretty much the same, distance being the only difference. In no case could I have made the runway. In three of the cases, I stood a good chance of making it to the airport area or an adjacent field, that concrete pad, for instance. My preference is still cruise climb instead of VY because I have extra energy and, you know, I'm fond of options that energy provides. As for altitude gates, I'm not going to consider a turn back in this airplane below 1,000 feet. I'll restrict my turns to less than 90 degrees left or right. I still need to experiment with a higher altitude to see if there is a turn back option at all for my airplane. It may not be, and that's something important to know. Remember that if an engine fails after takeoff, the main job of the airplane is to get you and your passengers on the ground in one piece, preferably unhurt. Your job is to fly the airplane to survive, not to preserve the airplane. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, hit like and subscribe. It looks like this about, about like this here. And I'd also like to thank my Patreon supporters right here. Uh, without them, it'd be harder to make these videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link below for the Flywire Patreon page. I hope you get together with your CFI or ACFI and practice this turn back maneuver by itself and then the engine out landing by itself. Figure, find out what your speed and altitude gates are. Don't wait until it happens for real to try to figure this out on, on the fly so to speak. The question is, what's in your hip pocket? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flywire.